see you guys. Uh, Beatrice Selby, of course, Chevron McDonald, Fennel, Fennel Innes is here. Guys, how are you doing? We are happy, very happy that you folks are here. Uh, right off the bat, we don't want you guys, um, your hearing being affected by any means. So we're going to pull some of the volume down. <laughs> if you don't do it, uh, you guys are going to... Yeah, I, I'm certain that's better. But good to have you folks here with us. Good to have you guys here. I'm certain that is better. VHS, good to see you. Claire Alexis, Charmley, Richmond, and Siobhan McDonald, Sean of Fortune. Great to see each and every one of you guys. Such lovely folks. Claire Alexis, how are you doing? Public work already. Good to have you on this morning on the live. VHS and all the other guys. Great to have you folks here with us, wherever you are joining us from. Folks, you know, it is so, it is so, you don't know the concentration not to swing in the chair. Don't swing, don't swing. Good to have you guys here, Yvette Wolford, John Jones. Great to see you folks. Do let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, Vanessa De Silva is here as well. Debbie Collins. I know some of you are up north. Some of you are uh, in Europe. Uh, good to see Tracy is here, Tracy Clark. Good to see you, Tracy. Uh, yeah, you see that? Uh, Vashti's here. Vashti's up north, just past uh, north, north. Vashti is here. Gloria Fraser. Vashti Bagnot. That is. Say hi to Rupert for us. Vashti's here. Gloria Fraser is here as well, guys. Good to have each and every one of you. Do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear. Finel. It is. Uh, good to see you, folks. Uh, Winella Garnet. Do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear. We got a couple things in the morning papers we want to jump to, folks. And then we uh, head into the we head internationally. To tell you what's brewing there some folks brewing some things brewing in the region as well some folks brewing as well too some uh, some things brewing in the region and then we come home we come home we come home there's no place like home you know for january good to have each and every one of you guys joining us wherever you fantastic folks are joining us from we are very happy very happy delighted that you good folks are here with us very very delighted welcome folks take Take a minute to share the live. Smash that emoji button, folks. We can dot the eyes, cross with T on the back end here. And we can be ready to go. Happy to have each and every one of you with us, guys. Trying to improve the song for you. Happy to have each and every one of you joining us, wherever you guys are joining us from. It is our, it is our distinct privilege. I can't lie. If it were a lie, I'll tell you so. <laughs> it's a distinct privilege to be here with you folks. Another morning, it's Thursday. Believe it or not, it's Thursday, at least an hour, and the 12th, Thursday, the 12th of the day, the 12th day already of January, already. And we're going to take the opportunity as we are behind the scenes to share the live, to smash that emoji button. We're going to take the opportunity. Good folks, I'll encourage you to do so. You all have been doing so lovely all week long. Don't let's stop today. Don't let's stop. Good folks, don't let the niceness stop today. Yep. Don't let it stop. Good to have each and every one of you guys. It's a real privilege to be here with you lovely folks. You fantastic folks. We got some nice folks with us, you know. Some nice folks with us. We are so happy that you guys are here with us. Good to have each and every one of you. Let's pick up on the shares, guys. Let's pick up on the shares. Let us also pick up, pick up, pick up on the emojis. How are you folks feeling this morning? Get up. Whatever is your feeling. I don't know how you guys are feeling. Whatever is that feeling, right? Let the emoji match it. <laughs> Do that for us. Let the emoji match it. However you folks are feeling this morning, pick an emoji to match. Sanborn, good to see you there, Stan. Rowena Cummins and all the other folks who are joining us. We are very, very happy you folks are here. If you get a chance to join us on YouTube, do so. We're giving some of the other great spirit, you know. Karen McPherson. Uh, Jewel Ward, good to see you, and Valerie. We're giving some folks a little edge. Sean Salvatore, great to see you as well. So when we move, we move, guys. Good to have each and every one of you folks here with us. It is a delight, folks. A delight to be here with you guys this morning. It is a real delight to be here with you folks this morning. We're fired up. We got some coffee at our end, and we are ready to go, and we trust we trust that you guys are as well. We got some coffee at our end, some coffee tea. You know how we do it. Some coffee tea at our end, guys. And we're fired up. We're ready to go. And we're happy that you wonderful folks 
that you guys are here with us. Brenda Bailey, we see you there, Brenda. We we'll see you, Brenda. Marina Cummins, we see you as well. Uh, Sherlyn Juicer Tendry, good to have you, Sherlyn. And Patricia Graves Andy, the whole Kwame Williams. We got a couple of things in the morning, people. We want to get, we want to get through. A couple of things uh, brewing as well, folks, including what's happening with the road there at Burma. Burma Road. You all saw that road last night, my father. That road there, that road there. I want to place to uh, some more comments. With Edgel in the National Assembly about roads and, and so on. You don't want to stick around for that. Nicola Foda, it's good to see you. What are you guys having for breakfast? I feel like some planting and eggs. I don't know. That's I feel like, I feel like some planting it. You know, um, uh, uh, there's a place on, on uh, Middle Street, this Middle Street here in Georgetown uh, that sells a hash breakfast. It's like um, provisions. They do it in a special way. You know, they uh, got these euphemisms, hash. You know, it just says provisions and buy, buy provisions. Hash breakfast, but it's kind of like how you would prepare dry provisions. I, I, that's that's when the palate. <laughs> that's when the palate. What are you guys having for breakfast at your end? Tommy Gibbs and uh, Julie Cameron. I know some of you, some of us really do breakfast lap here. <laughs> we only pretend like we have uh, a little bit of the food groups represented there and so on, but we really do. <laughs> somebody, you see somebody hanging down some pizza right now. However, you do breakfast, let us know. Let us know how you folks are doing. Tommy Gibson says he's not seeing Dave Durrell. Just passing that message on. <laughs> Tommy says he's not seeing Dave. Marjorie Budram, good to have you. Babu Ram, sorry. Marjorie Babu Ram. Paulet Mattis, Mattis, good to have you, Paulet. I've got it. Anderson is here. Jim o. Marcus is here as well. I see Annet Cummins. Good to have you, folks. Wherever you guys are joining us from, and we got uh, a couple hundred of you watching us, guys. Smash that emoji button. Rodwick Henry, take the opportunity to share the live as well. And we ain't going to lie too much. We got a couple things we want to head into. But now before we say hello to Mona Moore. Mona, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Mona Moore and John Jones. I see um, Annette Cummins, as we said. Jacqueline Fordyce is here as well. Michaela Andrew Coates. Andrew Coates. Good to have you, Michaela. Diane Fordyce is here as well. Gwyneth, Jacqueline, Roderick Henry. Good to see you, Roderick. How are you folks doing on this Thursday morning? You know, folks, when the week started, I didn't think I had the energy. You see? I didn't think I had the energy for Thursday. But here we are. All right? Sieblin Austin. Good to have you, Sieblin. Good to have you there, Sieblin Austin. Great to have you. Great. I thought my, my sister's the only person with a name like that. But her, hers is Steve Lynn. It's a combination of uh, one of my father's names, Steve, and my mother, Lynette, Steve Lynn. Yeah. They did their own thing there. <laughs> I'm so happy, I'm sure. <laughs> so happy. Yeah. Romel Gonzalez, good to see you, Romel, and Tommy Gibbs, uh, Love and Joseph. Cecilio, girl, we'll see you as well. Guys, wherever, wherever, wherever. Wherever you're all joining us from. Great to have each and every one of you guys. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day today. You know, at work, at home, at school. Whatever you're going to be doing today, I hope you do it well. If it's a good thing. <laughs> we want people doing bad things, illegal things. Well, Jolly Anderson and Jacqueline Fordyce and Beatrice Selby. Guys, we're happy. We're happy that you folks are here with us. We did tell you we want to um, head off, head off into the uh, morning papers and let you guys know some of the stuff that we're tracking some of the stuff we track on your behalf. The morning papers. The morning papers. You got a couple of things we're looking at, folks. A couple of things we are looking at. I got to slap my tongue there. A couple of things we're looking at. Oh, no, the planting calling me this morning. The hash. The hash breakfast. The ground provisions. Calling me today. Calling me. Calling me. Good to have each and every. Or a little IHOP breakfast. <laughs> a little IHOP breakfast would do me well. Folks, I went in the IHOP. I can't remember the exact place. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's come back. <laughs> can't, remember the, can't remember the exact place, folks. But we're somewhere close to um we're somewhere close to JFK. There's an IHOP somewhere in that vicinity. I had such a one, I had a bad experience the first IHOP breakfast that I had. I had a bad experience with it. I want another one like that. <laughs> I didn't want another one like that. But I took a chance. And November last year, I think it was, whatever. 
had one, there's an IHOP somewhere in the vicinity of JFK. Folks, I walk in there, I see, I see some food. I like myself. <laughs> the trading agents say, you don't like yourself. I like myself the day. Right? Uh, the pilot really called him some ground provision. <laughs> Sheila Boy Child was on, was on the menu this morning at GRN. A BHS at uh, Colin Adams was on the menu at, at GRN, folks. Colin, Colin Adams, what's on the menu? Edward Brooms, what's on the menu at your end? Good folks, perhaps some cereal, perhaps some porridge, some good quick roots system, <laughs> some cornmeal. What's on the menu for breakfast, guys? Do let us know. We're happy that you folks are here with us. We are happy that you folks are here with us. As we said, as we said, good folks, we wanna we wanna take a dive into the morning papers, give you guys a sense what's happening uh, at, in some of the headlines, folks. Some of the headlines that we're seeing, uh, our parts. Some of the headlines, are we ready to begin? Are we ready to begin, folks? We ready? Is we ready to get into the morning papers? Quite a few things. Quite a few things happening, folks. Quite quite a number of things happening. And uh, this is just one of them. Look at this, folks. Look at this. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. It's 100 and, 107, 70 years since we've had the uh, Chinese with us. 100 and 70 years. How many of us got Chinese heritage? How many of us? 170. Happy anniversary. Happy Chinese arrival day. You know, the last administration, we used to make a big fuss. You know, all the indigenous groups celebrating when they came. Yeah, they, they, even, even the indigenous came from somewhere. I used to mention the Bering Straits. Kurt Heideken, Margaret Nelson. Here's somebody said the beer interest. I see um, <laughs> Margaret Nelson talking about some sago porridge here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sago, I could take sago is an acquired taste. I, I, I love me some sago porridge, but not too steady. <laughs> not too steady. You know, now you got wheat up and so on. Them folks will know about C Rex and, and so on. All right. Those were the good days. Those were the good days. But happy arrival. I have a Chinese game. You see, you get a half Chinese with a cooks. Half chicken fries with a cooks. You said, you know, look, them Chinese we get overseas is from. It's fake. Especially now the printing chicken and all kinds of story. You get a good Chinese. Soon as some relatives I got, London the airport, they want the first Chinese shop. The licorice. <laughs> the licorice, really, literally. You got a good Chinese, you know, good Chinese food, half um, a, 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 and a small cooks. <laughs> You're good to go, folks. You lock off for the day. But we happy, we happy the Chinese came. Folks, my great grandfather, my grandmother's father, was ethnic Chinese. Uh, Mr. Chung, C H E O N G. Grandmother's Irish Chung. Her, her father was ethnic Chinese. She married the heart. Let me, let me tell you family story. Shirley and Juice and Tentry run the garden. I seen Kosher. I seen I see you for a little bit. Welcome. Maybe you're in the background. You know, quietly going. We're well, happy to have you here. I seen Kosher. Good to see you. And you land your Thomas. I wish I had the bell to hit it. Has just made a donation to our program. Right on YouTube. Right there on YouTube, you land the Thomas. Made a donation to our program. Very pleased. Thank you so much. That tell you family story now. So my great grandmother the hat, right? Uh, she was a hat, a uh, hatty tatty, <laughs> hat tatty. Yeah, yeah, she had a hat. I story. I'm qualified. <laughs> so Mr. Jung came from Hong Kong. I know the fact. I sit down and question people in my family. I don't know about y'all. I tell y'all, I fast. I sit down and I question folks in my family. As a matter of fact, I started to do a family tree. Who come from where? Who belong to who? Right? I've completed it to about, what, the third generation in our family. So, Mr. Chung, my great-grandfather, you see it in the eyes, in the hair and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a little indigenous blood in me to my father. Thanks to him. That's an indigenous blood. So, my great-grandfather, Mr. Chung, C-H-E-O-N-G, my grandmother's father, came from Hong, Hong Kong. All the way from Hong Kong because she mother the heart. John Jones, she mother the heart. 
So, Mr. Chung back in the days had a stall, good shop. It's not now our Chinese brothers and sisters taking over. It's long now. Right? He had a stall, good shop in the neighborhood that her mother used to frequent. One thing led to another with the birds and the bees. Boom! My grandmother touched down. Irish Chung. Yes. Just like that. It's long how we integrate, you know, don't tell me it's one guy. I know it. I've lived it. I've lived it. I have some nephews. If you see my nephews, you would never know. We related. They hear straight. Straight. See? Because my sister uh, was married, Pandey. My other aunt is married, Narayan. Another aunt who is married, Singh. Don't tell you but one girl, like you're introducing something new to us. My grandfather is ethnic Chinese, my great grandfather. Right? My father on his side, they got indigenous blood in them. Right? So we understand <laughs> when we say it's eight people. I, 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 I had a couple. Right? When we say it's nine people. Right? So we want to see, we want to see. Happy arrival, happy Chinese arrival there. 170 years since we got the Chinese here with us. And I'm thankful because God knows I wouldn't be here. So I got a lot to be thankful for. The Chinese. My great grandfather, Mr. Chung, came from Hong Kong. So one good day going back to the motherland. <laughs> one good day. Yeah, I want to visit the Orient. I want to visit Indians and yeah, run states and so on. I happy for y'all. I I I, I can go too, <laughs> but I want to go, I want to see the Orient. I want to go back to the, the I want to go back to the motherland, Hong Kong and so. <laughs> right, happy, 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 Chinese arrival day. Gwyneth and all the other folks. Right, y'all folks got any Chinese history or or, or just me? I plan one of my children got to get in celebration of my Chinese heritage. Has to have a Chinese name somewhere there. What of my kids? That's that, that's that's my book at least. Name one of the children, at least a middle name. Right? Lin or Ping or something like that. Right? Wagyu, something. But one of the names, one of the kids, one of the one of the kids can have a, a middle name or a first name. Something something small. Not so. Not so. Right? And Commissioner Cole is telling us we are welcoming the year of the dragon, the, the Chinese dragon. Yeah. Nasu. Nasu. Any other name? Natsu. Right? So good to have each and every one of you with us. Ni hao. <laughs> ni hao. Ni hao, folks. Ni hao. Good to have you folks. That's just as an aside, talking family story. 170th anniversary. Chinese arrival in our country, and we are tremendously privileged that the folks came. We are happy for the people who came. We're happy for the people who came. Uh, this is another headline, folks, that we're looking at in the morning papers today. Check, check this one out. Woman in custody for stabbing reputed husband. We told you guys about this one. We told you guys about this one. Woman in custody for stabbing reputed husband. Folks, we told you we like how the year start. Seven except we got uh, uh, Chinese arrival day and positive things happening in that way. But otherwise, it's, it's a lot of downhill. It's a lot of downhill. And I want to pick up on some of uh, some of this. Woman in custody, uh, stabbing husband, because the story is that um, Leroy Day is a young man's name, 26 years old, seems to have provoked uh, Shanisa Karak. The assailant here, because they said that they lived together. He was absent for four days. Returned home and an argument ensued over rent. Paying a house rent. And as they were having this scuffle, what evolved into a scuffle, uh, he picked up a wood and hit her several times and uh, caused some bodily injury, folks. That's according to some of the reports that we have. Hit her a couple of times about her body. And apparently it's one of the days when she knew she wasn't having it. Both says there was a knife somewhere close by and she picked up that knife. 
and sat him. He was rushed to the hospital. And that was it. That was it. Arguing over rent that ended up into a fight. A deadly, deadly, deadly outcome. Thoughts and prayers with the family of the bereaved. You know, thoughts and prayers go out to them. Very sad story. Very sad. Domestic violence. Gender-based violence. You know, we got to curb that. I see Commissioner Cole, who I think sits on the, um, the Commission of the Rights of the Child, says, too much violence in our society. Exactly. 12 days in and every day we've been articulating some something that's happening. Violence. Violence. That's the kind of society we have. And it's very sad. we got to curb that. In meaningful ways. But one of the, even, uh, the things that's even more sad is that lots of the people at the top who are supposed to be curbing the violence, they themselves are perpetuators of violence, are assailants. And so how you can get policy that can meaningfully, if not mitig if not alleviate, mitigate in some way the kind of violence that we see. But again, let justice be done and our thoughts and prayers with the family of the bereaved. Violence every day we've shown you since the year has started. And we got more. This is not the only case we can talk about. On the program this morning, there was more violence, as Commissioner Cole said. Roxanne Aaron, good to see you. Yolanda Thomas, Jacqueline Argyle, we see you as well. Seymour George, Steon Benjamin, and uh, Roxanne Aaron, good to have each and every one of you with us, folks. All special to us, all very, very special. This is another headline we're following, folks, in the morning papers. We want to direct your attention to another headline we're following. We got some crucial dates coming up, folks. They're telling us that the ruling on the substantive appointment of Chancellor and Chief Justice is set for March 7th. And, you know, when this case was um, heard recently, again, promises being made by um, promises being made by the Attorney General. Oh, we, we, we become a wrong day just now. If only you hold on a little longer. Remember just yesterday we were telling you the Chancellor of the Judiciary, the Acting Chancellor, Janet Cummins Edwards, said the fed up waiting, fed up of the promises of the PPP that they're going to appoint the Judicial Service Commission. Right? And it's, it's to our collective shame, this one here, as a people, it is to our collective shame, honest to God, that is about 20 years now, we have not had a substantive chancellor and chief justice. It is to all of, all of us should bend their heads in shame. APNU, AFC, PPP, are, are we? 20 years, you know what that says? Roderick Henry, Pratia Phillips, for 20 years, we could agree. That's bad. That's bad. For 20 years, we could not agree. 20 years, we could not agree. <sighs> 20 years. Oh, it's, it's 20 years, we couldn't agree. It is time. Three years now. And Ali promising, 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 promising. The leader of the opposition has to, uh, the president and the leader of the opposition has to have a meeting of minds. Meaningful consultation for the appointment of the chancellor and the chief justice. And we went with the exception to the rule. Every other country, you've got professional people, understand the law, dispensation of the law, the administration of the law, except, except, um, What's his name? Except Nandilal. Remember, Caribbean Court of Justice said he brought the entire administration of justice into disrepute. So he clearly don't understand it. Clearly. The CCJ said that about him, about the PPP's attorney general. He brought the entire system of justice into disrepute. That's what the folks said. But we got a lot of other folks, learned legal luminaries, 
and we've got two right now. We don't always agree with Chief Justice Roxanne George Wiltshire and, you know, how she arrived at some of her... We don't know, but the woman is a bright woman. Don't get tired. up. Don't get tired. And a little bright too. It's only these days. And they look a little dry up and say one and two weird, weird, weird things. Like the long with this administration is, is, is the more thing. So don't get tired. up. Roxanne George Wilshire is a bright woman. Right. And so is the Chancellor. You have the Cummins Edwards justices. Right? But maybe because they have a certain hue. Take their teeth. They have a certain hue. Let's drink my black, my black coffee. They have a certain hue. We had a holding pattern. And again, it was uh, the acting chancellor, Janet Cummins Edwards, who said yesterday, again, I want to reiterate that, they fed up waiting for the Judicial Service Commission to be appointed. As a matter of fact, it's not my words, it's the Attorney General who said that the appointment of these bodies are um, of national security, crucial to national security, then why are we holding out? Hear what he said in his arguments. Of course, the, the opposition, according to um, uh, what, what we know, has been saying that you know, there's a duty on the, on the head of state to move in this direction. The appointments of Chief Justice and the um, Chief Justice and Chancellor, you know, it's, it's the same folks who told us that it was, uh, it was um, what is the phrase? What's the, what was the legal phrase? It was a necessity to have a king as commissioner of police. Uh, it's not a necessity to have uh, these folks in their substantive roles. Well, here what Nandela argued. Let, I, I, I want to quote him here. In the report that we have, in his submission, he told the court that President Ali had long indicated that he would deal with the substantive appointments of, uh, of the country's top two judicial posts. When the time is right, you got to wake up and feel, well, I think today's the day. I think today's the day. You know, to quote Justice with on another issue in the CCG, it seems to be no urgency. No urgency. Ali indicated when the time is right. When the time is right. That's part of what he said. He indicated when the time is right. And after the various service commissions are established, such as the Judicial Service Commission, the Public Service Commission, and the Police Service Commission, among others, which are crucial to, which are crucial to national security. So any finish all that, you come along to Chief Justice and, sir, and Chancellor appointment. That should be an indictment on the Attorney General of this, of this country. That he could stand up and quote all the commissions that are yet to be established, that are crucial, in his own words, to national security and three years out three years out or three years in they have not been established as yet. he should be ashamed of himself to say that in what what they count as a functioning democracy but we long know Jacqueline Argyle Michaela Andrew Coates and Natasha Thomas that democracy for them is an excellent ballot and then the rest is up to us an excellent ballot that's democracy and we finish with that rule the law good governance fight upon that uh, ag could say we didn't do all of this we are three years into administration of a five-year term and when the president get around it so what else he got to do Ethan Ali was on a walkabout in her telling. And what happened on that walkabout, as far as you know, was not planned. When the time is right, that's what I'm hinting at with what the AG said. But oops, bounce into Big Auntie. He stopped in to say hello, he realized the house little, little shaky. And Oprah style, you get a house, you get a house, you get a house. Big Auntie got a house. They spent about two or three weeks on that project. That wasn't planned. 
You telling me in that three weeks ordinarily, yeah? If one couldn't eke out some time to look at the appointment of the Judicial Service Commission, the Chancellor and the Chief Justice, he's so busy. You got time to practice schedule with things you didn't even plan to focus on. But the things you should be focused on, you got time with that. And you telling us about good governance, good governance like art, you know where you see it. And this puppy show we got up here is not good governance. It's not good governance. Well, uh, Justice, um, I think it's Demon Young, she's going to pronounce on this case on March 7th. March 7th. Did I get the, did I get the, uh, the justice right? I hope so. I, I think it's Justice Demon Young who is presiding over this. But yes, I, I got it right. It's going to be a virtual hearing March 7th for the judgment on this one. Uh, whether the president is correct, that is in your time, whenever you feel like doing it. Are you sure you're gonna the the, the, uh, the court is gonna come down reasonable time? Three years can be reasonable. The two year uh, left on your tenure. That's madness. That is absolute, absolute, absolute madness, good folks. Absolute madness. And finally, one of the things headlines we're looking at in the morning papers. Chief of staff, they tell us this one. They this one is thing ish. Chief of Staff receives courtesy call from Venezuelan ambassador. Uh, I mean, in the normal th uh, run of things, you know, a neighbor, uh, um, a foreign emissary, paying up with Venezuela, ambassador going to meet with the Chief of Staff. Mm. Why do you feel like them boys is going to see where's we strength? I will go meet him by he office. <laughs> That's just me. I'll go meet him by he office. But if you then by go if you see me strength, you go on in camp, I ain't gonna look around and say, hey, them boys are gonna look near. Let's look at like easy pickings. Them boys are gonna look near. Easy pickings here. Right? Folks, you know when they had the whole um the the whole upheaval of mock and the folks stood up for their rights there. I saw the police firing some guns. Right? I got a piece of tissue here. Right. Patao! And then the bullet drops her. <laughs> right in front of you. Right. I see guns jamming. Her men fighting to reload some guns. I see a look story here. Tommy Gibbs. I see like some guns backfiring. Like them guns on fire since World War One. Some guns falling apart. So when I saw this headline, Chief of Staff, Godfrey Bess, you know, I was a little taken aback to that story there, Godfrey, uh, Godfrey Bess, Brigadier, welcome the ambassador to Guyana, the Venezuelan ambassador to Guyana. And that happened at the, uh, the, um, the defense force conference room on tuesday uh, ambassador carlos amador perez silva carlos amador perez silva the venezuelan ambassador again i said i feel like them by scoping me out he said look look thing here it's a little two by four it's not even an army it's a defense force easy pickings venezuela Venezuela, yeah. I've been watching that little thing ish. What happened to the helicopter that they said um, park on the lands of Jerry Govia's property there at Ogle? Um, that it is alleged to be a former Venezuelan army helicopter. Hmm? You know, I find very, very skeptical of anybody who won more than half of me house. Right. Welcoming them and shaking hands and smiling like all is well and good. That's just me. I won't pretend Venezuelan claiming more than half this country. That's just me. I won't pretend they didn't, um, you know, evict, eject some of our um, oil exploration um, activity that we had going on. 
I won't pretend that we're in the ICJ with them and the very Venezuelan border controversy. I won't pretend. So when I see Venezuelan officials visiting the army base, I, I put an asterisk over that. I put an asterisk over that. I hope we don't come to regret it. I hope we don't come to regret it. I had to go in my heat office. I just saying, I had to go by heat office and meet you right there. And um, carry all the guys in his hospitality with you. But I didn't bring in nobody for see me strength. All my weaknesses. I didn't do it. Nope. At all. I didn't go in there. Will, <laughs> willingly. I wasn't going to go there willingly at all. And folks, those are just a couple of the things that we're following. A couple of the things we're following on the morning papers. A couple of the things we're following. Yeah, I didn't go in there. All right. John Jones said people selling me out to Venezuela. Right? They sell me out to Venezuela. When Arthur says the shell, shell casing dropped, yes. It's not the shell casing alone. We were there, look at the bullet follow the air. <laughs> Some big guns. And then by spy eyes, he's little smoke or something. <laughs> shell casing alone. <laughs> See some men fighting with some guns to reload and say, so this is something else. Big fancy right here and so on. The weapons are even working. We're in a bad way. We're in a bad way. Those are some of the issues, guys, we're tracking. Some of the issues we're tracking in the morning papers. We're getting ready to show you folks some of what is happening internationally. Some of what's happening internationally, some of what's happening regionally. And folks, some of what is happening in the 592. Let me take a sip of tea before I come back to you guys. Mm -hmm. Some of what's happening, folks, internationally, we want to share with you. There's quite a few things. We're going to pick up a couple for you guys. You know, you think it's only we. It's only we counting we. <laughs> Not so good, folks. Not so. Uh-uh. A -uh. lot of stuff happening. Here's one of the things brewing, folks, that we're tracking in the morning papers. My Lord. A person in the U.S. I'm going to tell you if it's stated. It doesn't matter. They found pigeons with little backpacks on. <laughs> this reads like a movie. You know, the, the, the guys are there watching the prisoners in the yard. And I notice a board getting a little too steady. And on close inspection, the, 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 the reports are the corner of the board. <laughs> they notice the board got on a, a little backpack strapped to the back. Well, backpack. And in this backpack, they got some things. Right? Pigeon smuggling drugs. Tiny backpacks. Tiny backpacks. They said this was it was filled with meth. All right. Filled with meth. As a matter of fact, folks, just to be just to be um informationally correct, it was in Canada, not in the US. Pigeons smuggling meth into prisons. <laughs> Them boys uh, getting more and more creative. Well, we see, we think him cooking everything. People smuggled marijuana in plain sight, ganja and so on. Then concealing that. Too much work. They just ferry it. Prison officers, regional officials, ambulance. You see, we see cooking everything, cooking curry, cooking coil, cooking board. But this one is a little different. <laughs> Them boys. Fly it, fly it in. It's not drawing a pigeon, pigeon train to carry in the things, smuggling the things. Them boys different, different good folks. The different. Now this you following in the region, folks. Regionally, regionally, pick up on this one. Regionally, me doing a lot of things, you know. 
Me are doing a lot of things for our peeps. For our people, a lot of things. Don't come around me, you're funny. Don't do it. You're going to be disappointed. Don't do it, good folks. Don't do it. A lot of things we are doing as we focus on what's happening, guys, in the region. In the region. I like this plan. The World Bank has approved $100 million uh, for Barbados. Their Green and Resilient Recovery Program. $100 million. Yep. $100 million for this project. Uh, this uh, green resilient development policy loan, they said it has two main pillars. Listen to some of it. It focuses on green and blue resilient development, which includes a new law on water use, the adoption of a climate change and agricultural policy, and the establishment of an environmental sustainability fund. That's a part of it going to do. Must have an agricultural policy. Where's, where's we on? Everything done. Second pillar facilitates a Barbados low, low, uh, low carbon and resilient infrastructure development uh, through the implementation of new standards for agency level disaster management plans, institutional reviews, and the National Emergency Management Agency. The people got a plan. You could only stay ahead if you got a plan. Never there, they're bouncing all over the place. It's not going to work like that. The folks got a plan in Barbados. Trinidad got a plan, so. Trinidad, folks. Next door. Whatever direction. <laughs> Next door, Trinidadian government approves the largest solar project in the Caribbean. If you go going go big, Go big or go home. The largest solar project for the Caribbean. Right? The largest. Not in terms of cost, because the cost is a little top secret. But in terms of the, the magnitude of what they want to do. They are they just approved this um, 112 megawatts solar project. And it should commence in March. 112 megawatts. Go big or go home. Trade out, show me how to do it. Go big, go big or go home. Yep. That's how the Trini is doing it. Big. Go big, go big, folks. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Good folks. We're coming in the 592. We're coming in the 592. You have a story for us? 627-6963. Y'all got a story for us? Let me know the man. 627-6963. Good folks. And just in case, just in case, just in case you wonderful folks looking for some legal advice, some legal counsel, tap into the Alison Collins firm. Didn't give you the guidance you need. You need a commissioner of votes after David's justice and the peace. Good people. The Alistair Collins Forum. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. For all your legal document needs and more, the Alistair Collins Firm is the place for you. If you are looking to have your statutory declarations done, affidavit of income, affidavit of identity or guidance replacing your damaged or lost passport, or lost license, you need the Alistair Collins Firm. They can also help you with tenancy agreements, agreements of settlement, your power of attorney, your last will and testament, and certification of documents. The Alistair Collins Firm is located at the Callion Mall, 162 Lama Street in Georgetown between Camp and Waterloo Streets. Alistair Collins is a commissioner of votes to affidavits and a justice of the peace. You can also call them at 649-6410 or 685-6446 or 503-1451. The Alistair Collins Firm, help when you need it. I'm happy to be able to tell you and to bring you the news that we have now got many of the favorite things you've been looking for in December for Christmas presents. Across here we got these perennial best uh, classics, kidnapped little women, little men, Joe's boys, Treasure Island, Robinson Crusoe and so on. Further down the line, 
you will see Enid Blyton's. I think we got about 45 different titles of Enid Blyton's, the Secret Sevens and the Famous Fives and all the other series, all the other series that she has. Going even further down this line of the store, we got some of these classics to the top here. I mean, those are here for the Christmas season, but I think people prefer the um, more colorful looking ones. They are so well written and are judged to be classic. It's, it's something that I'm um, conferred upon them, like how you say, Sir and, and, and Madam and Zan. These books, because of the quality, have been deemed to be classics by those in the literary world. Not all books are designated classics. It's a special breed of books, a special type. <laughs> so when you pick up a kidnap and uh, all these kinds of books here, these are considered classics. Oh, I just put my eyes upon um, Tolkien's The Hobbit. We haven't had this in the store for years. And we got now um, a number of them, bottles of Tolkien. What's this one? Atlas of Tolkien. You got a, even a dictionary of Tolkien. Dark powers of Tolkien. And then you got to move over to the other side where we have some really attractive children's books. We're in the 592, good folks. We're happy to have you guys back with us. We're in the five. We're in the 592. And we want to head to what's happening. We want to head to what's happening locally, folks. What's happening locally? Uh, first up, first up, we told you about this uh, one last evening, but some additional information had us, guys. Some additional information had us. Uh, this is the lad out of uh, Wickenham. Lost his life, guys, out of Wickenham. His father said, um, children account, you know, two young men riding a motorcycle in Wickham I'm lost control and hit a tractor head on. Hit this tractor head on. Hit the tractor head on. Very, very, very sad. And uh, it was 16-year-old uh, uh, Mohammed Amir Khan who was the who was the um, who was operating this motorcycle. Uh, Mohammed Amir Khan, 16 years old, and the pillion rider, his colleague. Was 21 year old uh, Vikash. Vikash Singh, just 21 years old. Young people. And the reports is that Mohammed American lost control of that motorcycle and hit that tractor head on. But as well as father said, we found uh, so startling, you know, that we found so startling. The father said he was alerted by a phone call that his son was involved in this accident. And when he got on the scene, you know, the father, the son kept saying to him, this is Muhammad Amir, kept saying to him, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. He said continuously, his son kept saying that to him. And he would succumb shortly after that. You know, I understand that as a father. When your son, your child, say, I love you, daddy. How that makes you feel inside. He said it's broke him to see his son in that condition. It broke him. And then to hear what he said to him, he said he, he repeated continuously, daddy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Um, Amir lost his life in an accident. It was reported initially that his colleague also succumbed, but reports are that he is in critical condition. He has not passed away. He has not succumbed. Uh, Vikash Singh is in critical condition. If you can spare thoughts for Vikash, please do. You can spare thoughts for him. Please do, folks. Amir Father said he kept saying repeatedly, I love you, Daddy. I love you. I love you. And that was it, sadly. Wickenham lost control of a motorcycle and the report says hit the tractor head on. 
very, 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 very sad. Again, we supposed to bury our, 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 our kids supposed to bury us. We grow old, the natural course of life and reflection of time, life happens. It's a very unnatural thing to have to bury your children, I would suppose. A very, very unnatural thing. That's just one of the issues we're following, guys, uh, locally. In addition to that, you know, the Mixed Martial Arts Association locally, they're trying to get some players up to an international competition. They said they sent out a whole host of letters to sponsors. They have not heard any responses. They have not heard, they have not heard any responses. Here it brings to mind, guys. When these folks talk about, you know, uh, this big GDP we got and how everything nice and so on. Louisa Wills, Ram Singh, Singh, Gwell Anderson, Natasha Thomas, Ingrid King. Right? That's one thing you can't carry to the shop and get nothing out of it. We got big GDP. Fastest growing economy. Tell that to this team that needs sponsorship. Yeah? Tell that to this team. They said they have written to big businesses requesting sponsorship. They got some last year and they were able to proceed on this uh, international tournament. They want to do so again, this mixed martial arts association locally. They got a big competition coming up and they, they want to participate. But what that means that they wrote to lots of organizations, this according to the report, they said they have not received any response. They have not. You know, if we can help them, big businesses, let's let's have these boys out. If we can help them, let's help them out. Yeah, one of the things we're following. And of course, anything to do with squatting on that way. Attention, this one, this one here, folks. You got to take this one with plenty of salt and, and so on. Plenty of salt and so on. Squatch has given six months, we saw the headline, to relocate from the East Bank Sea Dam. Now, the aim here in this piece, in this propaganda piece, is to show that everybody how happy with housing trying to um, give you land and so on and move you up. Everybody happy. Right? So they went down there to this um, activity they had with the ministry and so on engaging these squatters. And they took some comments from folks, which kind of baffled me, right? Because on one hand, they're saying that every, everybody happy is nice time, right? The folks there at the sea dam, they're happy. They're happy with what's happening. They're happy, right? They said, um, persons thank the ministry. I want to make sure I get the phrasing right. Um, for, for, uh, improving their living standards. But when I read some of the comments, I don't know how to take it. For instance, Indra Mangal, she's 51. I, I, fig I figure 51, she's young. You know, she's a little lucid. Right? Indra Mangal. She said to them, she's been squatting at this um, sea defense reserve for 17 years. She's 51. She's been squatting for 17 years right? at this reserve. It means she's squatting since the PP went in power the last time. Right? And then dream for coming out. 51, she's squatting for 17 years. But that was what got to me. She said she was allocated a house lot. Listen to this. She was allocated a house lot, but still has an outstanding balance to pay. You heard that? It's not nice time in this country. That every, everything nice, everybody going married. She has an outstanding balance to pay. But here this part, right? Remember, the ministry said everybody thanked them for improving their living standards. Listen to this line in this report. I want to quote it verbatim for you. Mango was advised to pay the outstanding sum and she will be told if the land ready. <laughs> the 
Mango was advised to pay the outstanding sum and she will be told if the land ready. I telling you what, where, where did we get this from? This is Chronicle reporting. Chronicle. She must pay the outstanding balance and she will be told if the land is ready. Because you know the giving land is jungle. Right? Again, the aim is the aim is photo up. The aim is photo up is that actually to move people. It's to say we give land. But the people even know the land there. She must pay the outstanding balance. 17 years she's quite She managed to get a piece of land, she can't even pay for it. She cannot even pay for it. But the ministry, the aim of the piece of propaganda is to show you. You see? Uh, people are cooperating. It's only mocker. People are cooperating with the ministry. So pay the balance and we can tell you if the land ready. And they want them to move in a couple months. Six months. All right, then go and bulldoze them like mocker. That was an interesting one. Pay the balance and we can tell you if the land ready, my lord. I think they're making it too easy for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big auntie. You know. All kind of people in drugs now. Right? Folks get fine with cocaine and a host of other things. They said, uh, we just in a hustle. We never have been crime. <laughs> we just in a hustle. We're not involved in crime. That one had me. We ain't doing no crime. That's the comment attributed to them. Bibi Zul Zamal. She's 57. Right? The suspects. Bibi Zul Zamal. And she's listed as a domestic worker. And she's pushing cocaine. Right? Bibi Zul Zamal. And she's 50, 59, rather. She's 59. And 33 year old. Travis Gilbert. Yep. The two were busted on Wednesday, yesterday, with weed and cocaine at their home in Podroin. All right. Busted with cocaine, at, weed and cocaine at their home in Podroin. BB 59 and Travis 33. Look. And they were detained according to police, for selling narcotics. The weed and coke was found in the suspect's podrine home. According to police ranks, search of the home in Swan Street, squatting area, Swan Street, squatting area, podrine, about five hours, uh, yesterday, 500 hours yesterday, after receiving information of illegal activities that might be taking place there, the police swooped down. During the search, the cops observed this to this. During the search, the cops observed that a black string tied to a floorboard in the kitchen area leading to a beam underneath the house was where the thing went. Right? A black string. The undoing was a black string. I don't know which is worse. Chandas undoing was a, was a stray dog. You see? Sharon Darson doing was a stray dog. These folks are black string. <laughs> the, the police noticed in the kitchen. That's what the, that's what the one report says. All right? There was a black string tied to a floorboard in the kitchen area, leading to a beam underneath the house. And it's there they can find the weed and the coke. The ranks pulled up the set string, stating the police, and reportedly found two bulky transparent plastic bags attached to the end. Too bulky. Transparent plastic bags tied to the end. One of the bags contained a quantity of whitish rock-like substance suspected to be cocaine and the other had a brown paper had br several brown paper parcels containing the ganja. Yep. Bibi Zamul <laughs> Zam Zamun Zamal selling cocaine and Travis Gilbert according to the reports yeah, yeah. 
They say, just a hustle. We ain't doing no crime. Police said they insisted. It's just a hustle. They ain't doing no crime. They ain't doing no crime. Yeah. Reprehensible. Parents fighting with teachers in school. What is country coming to? Parents fighting with teachers in school. What are we coming to? Huh? Ministry said it is unacceptable. Right? And will not be condoned. According to the ministry. Reprehensible. Right? It is a reprehensible and ghastly act. Will not be condoned. It says we cannot beat teachers and then ask them to teach our children peaceful conflict resolution. We can't beat teachers and then ask them to teach our children peaceful conflict resolution. Part of the statement says that, you know, such actions will be sanctioned by the ministry, which includes prohibiting the violent parent or guardians from having access to the school premises, transferring any learner out of, out of a school, transferring any learner out of a school whose parents commit acts of violence on teachers or any other sanctions that are deemed necessary. You know the sad part in all this? The impact on the child. Because that child is not responsible for the parents' behavior. And that's sad. Very sensitive issue with the child. The impact on the child. Again, a child not responsible for the parents' behavior. The parents went and carry on and fight the teacher. Fight the teacher. Fight the teacher. You think it's easy? Fight the teacher at Graves Hall Primary. I tell you, <laughs> I ain't teaching in a couple of years formally. But boy, I would fight them. And sir look like he didn't just roll over. Right? Lisa, Lisa said the wrong thing. You are praying for the teacher. I think the teachers are wearing black today in solidarity. I think that's what the ministry was encouraging. The teachers to wear black in solidarity. Standing with sir. Right? And you know what? You got so many avenues. So many avenues. For recourse. And if you try a few, or if you try all in the affair, we can talk then. But beating up teachers can be the first recourse. It just can't. Biggest you folks. The Burma Road. The Bishop and the Burma Road. Then they tell us cost what? A hundred million dollars a right? hundred million dollars that Burma Road costs a hundred million believe it or not a hundred million folks I tell you we're in a bad spot in this place you know we're in a bad spot a very very bad spot we're in a bad spot I ain't want to lie to you I ain't want to lie to you that's I tell you the truth. We're in a bad spot. A hundred million dollars. This money was approved by the National Assembly. Making sure I find my notes. This money was approved by the National Assembly August last year. And it was part of a package. It was part of a package for um, miscellaneous roads. They tell us it was part of a package for miscellaneous roads. See, miscellaneous roads. Well, huh. Lord have his mercies. Lord have his mercies. Part of a package for miscellaneous roads, good people. And it was a three billion dollars the National Assembly gave. For miscellaneous roads. Three billion dollars. 
for miscellaneous roads. And I had some comments at that time, I can tell you, about this project. Right? I had some comments at the, t at the time on this project. And I just didn't like it. He didn't like it one bit. He didn't like it. And he had a, he had a couple of things to say, which I want to remind, remind himself. He had, a, he had a couple of things in response to my comments on the quality of the roads. You see? They don't know what they want the opposition do. You oppose the vex. You talk the vex. You don't do nothing the vex. We can continue to do what we gotta do. We will do a hundred million dollars the road cost. And during that budget exercise, they had already passed the 552.9, I think, billion dollars the February. This was a supplemental budget they were coming back for. And the Ministry of Works, I think, got about five billion in supplemental uh, uh, spending, if not more. And the three billion was going to miscellaneous roads. In that budget presentation, that supplemental budget presentation, uh, here's some of what missing our queue there. Here is some of what um, they said to us. Uh, in that exercise there, let me read it. it not, the, the graphic is not gonna is not gonna comply with us. Let me let, let me pull up another way. Yeah. But right. in that budget exercise, in that budget exercise, he had a lot to say. And one of the things that was said, and you will hear it from him just now in a second. About this three billion, when I questioned the quality of roads we were getting, he said, "Let me make it clear. You can hear it, right? Let me make it clear. Let me make it clear." He says, "Clear. We want make clear. <laughs> Let me make it clear. All roads that are being done by the Ministry of Works are done the same quality in every community." Every time and every place. That is what he said. All roads that are done is being done, you know, in every community, the same how, the same way. Right? We can't tell them nothing but roads because they remember they, they they know everything. Right? He's the road specialist. What we could tell them about road. Hmm? He was upset that I had anything to say at all. Why not the road? That's what the fellow said. All of the roads are being done, he said, to the same quality in every community, every time, in every place. And he went on to say, the design department from the Ministry of Works don't deal in politics. These are professional engineers. These are professional engineers whose task is to deliver engineering solutions. That is what he said. But you see that road in Burma? Uh-uh. And elsewhere. That is the very issue that the Region 10 Regional Chairman Darren Adams and I were talking about. The regional chairman has some concerns about the quality of work happening in this region. He questioned that, Agile Vex, a hundred million taxpayers' dollars, came out of the coffers to pay for the road there at Burma. Burma Access Road, a hundred million. You know how many things that money could have gone to them to do? You know how many things? The road falling apart. But before we get to the state of the road, this is what uh, the Minister of Works, Public Works said in the National Assembly. When we brace him on the quality of roads, he vex. Listen to him. Listen to him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Honorable Minister to share with this house, uh, 
information on some of the roads that were identified. I did hear a comment being made by a colleague from this honorable house, albeit on the suspension at this time, about the quality of roads being done in one area and the quality being done in all areas. Let me make this very, very clear. All roads that are being done by the Ministry of Public Works are done to the same quality in every community, every time, every place. The only difference it is that it's being done by different contractors. But if we're putting an inch and a half of as asphalt or two inches of asphalt, it's across the board. The design department from the Ministry of Public Works don't deal with politics. These are professional engineers. These are professional engineers whose task is to deliver engineering solutions to benefit the development of Guyana. And I think that criticism that is being made is not only an, an, a political attack on the PVPC administration, but it is also an attack on the professionalism of the engineers and the Ministry of Public Works, many of whom worked under the AFNU AFC administration. It's the, same, it's the same group of engineers. It's the same technical team at the WSG. And for a lawmaker, a legislator to be saying they're different quality of roads for different communities is to attack the professional integrity of these engineers. Mr. Political attack, he says. It's a political attack because you're doing the work of an opposition. You're scrutinizing the projects. Right? You're scrutinizing the spending. He says it's a political, he sees it as a political attack. You're scrutinizing what them boys doing. He said it's a political attack. You hear story? It's a political attack. Folks, take a look at this road. A hundred million dollars of taxpayers' money. A hundred million dollars of taxpayers' money. Uh, went on this road a hundred million dollars on the Burma access road you go down that road you meet a Marads huh? a Mars it's another entity of the Ministry of Agriculture and the road folks a hundred million taxpayers dollars was given to a contractor less than six months ago and the whole road it like wet biscuit it like damp cardboard wet tentis or sheet rack wet sheet rack it just crumbled a hundred million dollars and edge vex you question the competence of the contractor. Friends, family, and favorites, Vix, you must allow this to go unchecked. You must allow this to go unchecked. A hundred million dollars. And he said, all the roads in this country is of the same quality in every community, every time, every place. Right? The design department in the Ministry of Public Works, not political, professional engineers whose task is to deliver engineering solutions to the benefit, to benefit the development of Guyana. Engineering solutions. Right? He said we got one quality road. The same quality. Every community. Every time. 
every place. Those were his words as he was making a case to receive $3 billion from the National Assembly, of which $100 million went to this road. Who shared the lie? Folks, isn't this criminal? Hmm? Isn't this criminal? Huh? I want some engineers to tell me what they're seeing here. I know we got a lot of engineers who watch us. I want the engineers to tell us, when you look at this road, what are you seeing here? What are you seeing here? I know the rest of us can see valid, credible information. But what are we engineers seeing? Who shared the live this morning? Who can smash the emoji button for us? What are you all seeing here with this road? Lord of his mercy. But the worst part, in that debate, on those estimates for that three billion, for that three billion, you had a, a member of parliament on the government side that asked the bishop a question. And his response, but that's the donor. His response is the donor. A member of parliament asks a question on the government side of the benches. Right? So such a community wants to know if their roads are going to be done and could the minister provide a list of the roads that are going to be done with this money. His response is the donor. His response to her is the donor. Six months that road was, was built for a hundred million dollars. Friends, family, and favorites. A hundred million dollars. Edger's response to his own colleague asking for a list of roads that will be facilitated with this three billion dollars. Of spending and his response to her. I am surprised. Somebody who called himself a minister of religion and a minister of government could utter such a response in National Assembly. His response is the shocker. His response. Right? They said there's the earthquake road. That's what they call in this road, the Borough Access Road. This is the earthquake road. Is the earthquake road? That's what them by said. Is the tremor road? See, is the tremor road? His response, folks. His response to his colleague asking him for a list. Good Bishop, you come and you ask for this money here. Could you give us a list of the roads you're going to be doing? My, my constituency, PVP constituency, wants to know his response. Yeah? Take a listen, folks. <laughs> Take a listen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Honorable Minister to share with this house uh, information on some of the roads that were identified for upgrading on the this line item uh, because in our work in the community a lot of people would like to know if their roads are identified as for upgrading in this three million three billion dollars honorable minister you want to lay over that list mr chairman for the avoidance of confusion and to not interrupt social cohesion in the country, it would be advisable that we don't at this time name for Street versus Second Street and Third Street versus Fourth Street and Backstreet Street versus 8th Street. 
But what we are doing is when we go into a community with a, a location that is available to that community, as much as can be done before we leave that community, we get done. For example, some streets just need sectional repairs. And rather than doing the whole 500 meters, you do the sectional repair of 300 meters and you have monies to be able to do 200 meters in another street in the same area. So we are getting those things done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Honorable Minister to share you heard that, folks? You heard that? If he lists the streets that his government doing, will it will disturb social cohesion. What he's seeing, you can see so much of streets in the PPP areas doing, you can get vexed. You can see so much of streets in the PPP areas being done, you can get vexed. It can disturb social cohesion. He can disturb the peace if he lists the streets that he's coming to the National Assembly for $3 billion to fix. He can disturb social cohesion. Like the man is see far, he didn't see the Burma Road. He didn't see the Burma Road. He said he can disturb. It is going to disturb social cohesion. Folks, take another listen to that. Maybe it went by too fast for you. Take another look. Take another listen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Honorable Minister to share with this House uh, information on some of the roads that were identified for upgrading on the, this line item. Uh, because in our work in the community, a lot of people would like to know if their roads are identified as for upgrading. In this three million, three billion dollars, Honorable Minister, you want to lay over that list? Mr. Chairman, for the avoidance of confusion and to not interrupt social cohesion in the country, it would be advisable that we don't, at this time, Name for Street versus Second Street and Third Street versus Fourth Street and Back Street versus Eighth Street. But what we are doing is when we go into a community with a, a location that is available to that community, as much as can be done before we leave that community, we get done. For example, some streets just need sectional repairs. And rather than doing the whole 500 meters, you do the sectional repair of 300 meters and you have monies to be able to do 200 meters in another street in the same area. So we are getting those things. Yeah. He doesn't want to interrupt social cohesion folks when people say this is Guyana you know that motto when they say Guyana is not a real place that's what they're seeing and that is what they're talking about a whole minister 100 million spent on the Burma Road we can see you guys in the podcast and in the ring later on that's going to be for a time with you this morning that's our time good folks and that's our program. Good to have each and every one of you who are part of our program today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sheila Boychild, Peggy, Russell Elias, Candy Lee I uh, got close to 900 folks watching us. We're tremendously privileged. Share the live if you're catching us on Facebook. Share the live, folks. Smash that emoji button for us and partner with us as well, folks. You know, we can't. We just can't 
do it without you. You get a chance to party with us, folks. Please do so. Please do so, so that we can keep moving forward in peace and power. We're built by Cash App and Zelle and PayPal, MMG, MoneyGram and Western Union as well. All for your convenience. Good folks, partner with us. Hit us up if you have any queries. 627 69 That's our time. Good folks. And that is our program as well. So it's been a privilege being here with you folks. Stay safe out there. We're going to see you guys later on in the day. We're going to see you guys soon. Take it easy out there, folks. And have a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rest of the morning. We up. We're in the comments. Hope you're feeling better. Dion, yeah, what? good to see you. Jacqueline Argyle, we see you there as well. Ingrid King, Marilyn C. Fort, we see you. Yvonne Ramasar, Yvonne Ramasar. Wanda Hudson, good to have you, Wanda. And Chris Kippen, Esther Blue, great to have you. Esther Blue, great to have you. Hope you are well. Natasha Thomas, favorite. good to have each and every one of you. Stay safe, guys. Stay safe.